Look at how serious he looks. We're at New York Comic Con. Can you believe it? Let's roll. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Ezekiel the Third here with Don Fubar, and I have, uh, and I, I have it right here, Anthony Atamanik and Peter Gross from the President Show. Hey. Hello, everybody. Hello, How's everyone. Let me tell you guys, I'm a fan of the show. I've seen every episode. I Thank think you. I'm pretty Thank sure you. I'm up to date. Um, I think it's just a beautiful idea in the right time. Like, can you like give us a little bit of the background for maybe like people who don't know the story behind the show? Well, it's definitely a beautiful idea for the right time because imagine if you did that show five years ago and everyone's <laughs> like, "Why are you doing this? Yeah. <laughs> Why would we ever make a show about Trump being president? Yeah. <laughs> who the hell is Mike Pence? <laughs> who the hell is Mike Pence? Why <laughs> is this being done?" Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're uh, you know, this was a, a reaction to a long. A long period from when he ran for office and, and, you know, I was doing a live show as Trump and that sort of transformed over the course of the year into realizing he was going to get elected. And then I think afterwards uh, I hooked up with Pete and a group of people and we said, let's make Trump's version of a fireside chat and that will be an insane sort of dark talk show. Oh, and, and <laughs> it is, man. It's really, really, it's funny and it's dark and it's... It's, it's, it kind of feel guilty for laughing a lot of times. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I think the thing that's different, because there's so many people who are, like, talking about Trump and, and obviously other folks who do Trump, but I think what's nice about what Anthony does is he takes this really sort of deep dive into, like, the dark parts uh, yeah. uh, of his psyche. Uh, so the normal, as, the normal as, parts? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All the, yeah. It's easy, because all you have to do is get in there, and it's all dark. And it's like the infantilism of him. I mean, you know, I can like separate and watch it, and it, there is, I like, there's a lot of joy I get in watching him fall down or pick up, uh, try to get picked up to, you know, be on stairs to move upstairs or to to spin around and have a tantrum. And the relationship between Pence and Trump is very much of like an almost Abbott and Costello or sort of Martin and Lewis oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. dynamic. So, you know, you kids know what we're talking about. <laughs> or let's say uh, uh, Tom Baker and Sarah Jane. That, that should be, if you don't know that, you should leave the convention hall right <laughs> well, I don't know what that is, so I guess I'll leave. No, I, uh, watching the show, I find myself feeling bad for you. Oh, for Pence? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you know, it's so because funny. Because he treats you so horribly, and you just sit there and did you take say, it. Did you say he tweets you so terribly? He tweets, he tweets you me so terribly. Yeah. So terribly. <laughs> we, it is something we have to struggle with because Pence is a sympathetic figure in relation to Trump as far as their relationship goes. But right. objectively in the world, Mike Pence is not a sympathetic figure. Right, yeah, yeah, so sure. we have to keep uh, reminding uh, the audience of who that guy actually is. Yeah, I mean, I also think, like, the fun thing is I imagine... It's an unrelenting experience to be in that room with him every day as yeah. Mike Pence, and no empathy to that guy. But just imagine, just you're just sitting with this just boiled, you know, idiot, this lump of fat that's like just <laughs> saying the dumbest things and irrationally being emotive, and and you have to be like, yes, sir, because you so desperately want that yeah. seat. And yeah. if everything goes correctly, he'll get impeached or something, and then Pence will be president. Which is also a terrible thing. Right. So it's like there is no great out. Yeah. It's like it's like, like Ghost was like, choose your demise. Like you have yeah. a choice. Right, exactly. Which yeah. one do you want? Do you know Death how? Ruru. You know how if you're if you're you know when you're playing a, a like a round based game, like a game where like you sort of have to like it's like in Cuphead. There's the the level where the he's frog, a gamer by the way. Yeah, you know the frog level with the two frogs are yep. dancing, and if you don't, like, if you get hit twice by the first things, you just reset, and yep. it's hopeless. I feel as if, like, Trump's presidency is, like, <laughs> like, like as going into as that. Cuphead. It's as <laughs> difficult as Cuphead. It's like you go into it, and it's as if you can't unset the board. You're just stuck with the frog shooting shit at you. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like nothing you can do. <laughs> there's nothing you can do. It's like it's as frustrating as Cuphead. <laughs> now, you guys, uh, I'm, I uh, have done like, and I'm not just, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, but do it. I've done I, like, I've done I like local, local shower. shitty bar improv Good. for a long time. Are, do you guys have an improv background? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, Upright Citizens Brigade UCB, for right? I don't know. Yeah. 16 years. Oh, and very I, cool. Okay. And I started in Chicago. I did IO uh, Improv Olympic in Second yeah. City. But then after I moved to New York, I started performing at, at UCB, and that's where we met. Yeah, we used to we do the Ask Cat show, the Sunday night show. Sure, yeah. you bet. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. Um, so when you have when you have guests on, right? How do they treat you? Like like 
I, you have you have to kind of like drop the act off camera. Oh, sure. yeah. Oh, well, that would be disturbing no, if I, I walked around backstage. We're not Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, but to call me Trump every, yes, every exactly. time. But yeah. it is true that most guests never see me because the, the makeup takes like two hours. I always say that I'm, I, I'm an hour short of a Michael Dorn. So like, <laughs> you know, Dorn, I think it was three hours in, in, uh, in Next Generation. Wharf, in the yeah. Thing. Yeah, Wharf, oh, yeah. Wharf, for you folks who don't know. And uh, uh, so because of that, when the guest comes in, I'm already fully made up as Trump. So there's a lot of guests, there are a few guests I've seen after I've interviewed them. And I'll on the street, or I'll, and I'll go, hey, and they're like, who are you? Like, what are you like, an assistant? What do, you know? And I'm like, no, I was the guy who interviewed <laughs> yeah. you, uh, because it's you know it's full makeup. But sure. um, their first reaction, especially people who encountered him in their lives, mm -hmm. um, is pretty shocked or horrified, yeah. right? Like they usually are sort of put it back, and then um, you know I give them a little taste of what it's like, so that they are prepared for it. And then, yeah, I talk to them normally, but you know, I don't know. It's like being in the underground of Disney World, where all the character like actors have to walk to like come up and right. They got the they park. got their heads out. They're smoking cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mickey, yeah. we got to get back up there, Mickey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that is kind of how the show is. <laughs> all the kids try to pull my head off. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you do you do some stuff like out in the public? Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. do you guys get like do people like come up to you and like? Boo you or like say mean things him. to you? Like no one has ever known who I am, who uh, as Mike Pence out uh, uh, outside of relationship to Trump. They they think he's cosplaying like the, the albino from the Da Vinci from the Da Vinci Code. Code. They think I'm the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> and that's Pete's albino joke. In that's, suit. that's Pete's joke. Just, so just lacerating. I his I know. No, that's fine. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot. I made that joke. Yeah. The other thing I've got was Anderson Cooper. Once, and I was like, you got to be I, kidding me. I that is actually, a good-looking man. I, I can am actually not see that. Cooper. I can see that. Yeah, can I just say, you really don't have to do much to make you in? We should do a weird... Where I'm Anderson we Cooper. We should do a weird show where you're Anderson Cooper. For and Cooper. the divide up <laughs> of the Da Vinci Code. With, with, uh, with Trump, with people, those are the three things. Remember uh, when we were shooting in front of his family home in Queens? Oh, yeah. And all these school children, I mean, like... 100, 200 kids were all, like, all walking down across the street, and they all thought it was Trump. And so they, so what was it? Pointing and laughing. That is the number one thing yeah. that <laughs> wow. happens when people don't even know whether it's real or not. So I just like to think that his whole, always think his personality is developed out of the fact that everyone he encounters when they see him goes, ha, 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 ha. So like, his whole, he is a f like he's such a fool that people feel comfortable like you know laughing and mocking, mocking at him it. or screaming. I had a woman almost run a car off the road <laughs> in Times Square screaming at me, and she almost like drove her minivan onto the sidewalk. Yeah, we were yeah. shooting something, and uh, and how did you respond? He responded in a very uh, untrumpetful. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know what? That reminds me. Uh, how sad were you about the Mooch being in and out so quick? Because you had a character <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> it was so tough. good. I wanted to see more of that. Yeah. Well, you know, I always like to say that our show, you know, it's an extension of uh, Trump's mind, but it's also sort of like it's its own narrative, too. And so, like, we can always, whenever we want someone to come back and there's a good need, they're going to come back. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, the Mooch is Carmine from Laverne and Shirley. He's, you know, uh, Joey from Blossom. The whoa, like, yeah. he's, a, he's an archetype. He's yeah. the Fonz, or he's Chachi. Let's not, yeah, give, right. him yeah, yeah, let's not give him that much credit. Uh, but so, like, uh, but, yeah, it was, it was crazy that he, like, showed up and went away. And, but, you know, say la vie. Uh, I'm, I'm always a fan of them, of the administration. It's a weird thing because you're rooting for them to go away. So I'm actively rooting for my job to end. Yeah. <laughs> I, isn't that weird? Yeah. It's going like, to yeah. be a long run. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's no, going to be a long no, run. No. It's going to be absolutely huge. I know. It's going to be an unbelievable run. This is pretty damn good. <laughs> That's good. Very He's been holding a subtlety that shit for to a while. It. Nice. Wow. Yeah. It's all yes. about hand gestures, staying perfectly calm, <laughs> and not being surrounded by a huge body of water. <laughs> <laughs> water everywhere. <laughs> Very uh, good. And wind. We realize that wind is, is uh, one of uh, Trump's uh, main enemies. He has like a mythical, ancient uh, uh, character because the wind is yeah. like... Every the time you see him wearing a hat, it's because he's concerned 
that like a 10 mile an hour gust of wind is gonna blow <laughs> all of his hair back to the nape of his neck where it all lives. Well, yeah, and that famous photo of him like, you know, walking out of the airplane. The, and it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's all like it kills huge, it. huge, yeah. And that's oh, after yeah. like eight bottles of Aquanet have been yeah. applied <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah. Um, I have to ask you, uh, like, or not ask you, but say like, how great like your character, the character actors you invite on, not only the Mooch, but but uh, the Steve Bannon yeah. character. John Gamberling. Oh yeah. my God. From yeah. Fat Guy Stuck in Internet, if anyone remembers a show on Adult Swim called Fat Guy Stuck in Internet. 15 I, years ago? It's uh, 10, years, 10 ago. years ago. I highly recommend. I was the, uh, the old man, the slugworm man back on that show. Uh, and John's fantastic. He was a writer for the show as well. And then Adam Pally, who plays uh, Don Jr., mm -hmm. who's the executive producer. Yeah, we try to get great people, and we also try not to stunt cast. Like, Mario, even Mario Cantone, Mario was an old family friend of mine, and my mom taught him in college. So it was like, wow, that's, oh, he's that's a perfect cool. person. I'll just call Mario. You know, we, we, I think we like at the show to either use, you know, we want to use great actors or people who can make a turn on the role. Yep. We don't really care about, like, just dialing a celebrity in for the sake of people going, wow, that celebrity did that because yeah. that has no satirical impact whatsoever. And we also have, like, a certain <laughs> ethos that the show works under from improv and certain comedic backgrounds. So we, we want to, when we think of new people to play, administration people or family members, we're thinking of people in those modes. So mm -hmm. we sort of will it down. Uh, a little bit. We have some interesting, I yeah. think, things in the back of our in our back pockets of, uh, of oh, yeah. new characters to come. So it'd be pretty fun. Man, yeah. you guys, it's it's a fantastic show. You it's should funny. watch it, guys. It's 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 really well done, and it's in it's it's goofy. Yes, it's yeah. goofy enough to be really enjoyable. It doesn't have like a hard edge to it. Yeah, Which, I mean, I mean we the entry a, point is easy. The I entry think. point yeah. is really easy. watchable. Yeah, but but to say two things, which is, I'm a huge, I truly am a old school. Like my first convention was a Doctor Who convention in like 1981. Okay, and so I really want you to know, <laughs> like our show is going to have even sci-fi elements in it. Like yeah. we have already done that. We've already core, we we throw Illuminati symbols into the show. <laughs> I love doing it. Like I I. And also, like, I always think people sometimes go, well, I don't want to watch something and feel like I'm tacitly endorsing it. The show is an activist act against it. Like, we want people to watch it because you, we want you to see the, the, the content behind the impression and know that, like, we're writing it and doing it for the objective to, to try to stop this, this, this nightmare. <laughs> Has there ever been a more accurate... I mean, all he needs, I mean, I feel he's most like, what's his name from Dune? Like, if he was only floating all the time. <laughs> and oh, like, Har Baron yeah, Harkonnen? Har Baron Harkonnen <laughs> and taking, taking the, like, juice out of people's sets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like, taking out the heart plugs so and stuff. Yeah. Close. He's so close. He's so right there. Uh, we should do a Dune episode. Sure. Anyway. Coming to you, coming <laughs> to you soon, a Dune yeah. episode of The President Show. Yeah. Thank you guys so thank, very thank much for so being much, here. Brother. I appreciate thank you, it. Twitch. I hope impressive. you guys had a good time. Thank Absolutely. You, yeah. I will continue to watch. It's on Comedy uh, Central. You <laughs> and you can actually check it out on cc.com if you want Thanks to check it out. Everybody. That's where I watch it. Don't awesome. go away. More, more to come from the Twitch